In this video, we're going to go over the Gerbil Shield and Arduino and how to control our CNC using these things. This is my favorite way to control stuff because you can do so much with it. They make laser specific boards, but it'll just use one wide driver to control two motors, which is kind of lame. Or it doesn't have like end stops or it has some corny version of laser control. I like this one because it doesn't have any of that built in. It's You can mirror axes. You can do a lot of stuff with these. Okay, so let's take a look here. What's going on? So I just opened this up. They should all come with about the same stuff. Your drivers might be purple. And I'll show you how to deal with those too. So you have the Arduino here, right? It's got the USB, okay? It's also got this power plug right here. Now, this power plug will not power this board here. So we're going to kind of ignore this for Gerbil use, okay? I know it's one of the faster boards because it has this little chip right next to this. If it had this bigger, longer, skinnier chip, I would know that's a slower chip to run USB signal to this controller here. This is the brains of this board, okay? This little chip here is the brains. Then this is a shield. So if you look closely here, these pins all line up, right? So I can plug these in, line this side up, right? The gap matches right there, okay? And squish it together. And now it's an Arduino with a Gerbil Shield, right? Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Okay, next thing we need to do is figure out what we're actually going to use this board for. Okay, if I'm just going to use it on my CNC mill, like a 3018, the, what are those things called, the 1610s, all those little hobby mills, then I need to put a driver on X, Y, and Z. Okay, so very straightforward. I also have to use jumpers to do micro-stepping. That way I get the cleanest, uh, most accurate moves out of this. Uh, laser or out of the motor driver if I'm going to run a laser I really just have x and y axis right and then laser on and off but a lot of these lasers they have two motors for y and then one motor for x right that's very common so with this one I can actually take this red set right here and I can use that as another Y. I can also use it as another X or another Z, right? So if we look closely here, you'll see it says X right there, right? So this is your X driver right here. This one says Y. This is your Y driver. This is your Z. This is your Z driver. And then this is your A. Okay? So that means this is your A driver. So on the side here, it says X, Y, Z, and D12, okay? That means you can control A with either the X signals, the Y signals, the Z signals, or signals from D12, okay? So we'll go into that a little later. Like, it, that's a cool function that it has, but we won't go into that just yet on this first video. So if I want to set this up properly, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to set it up for lasers right now, Okay. So I'm going to take my jumpers here, and I'm going to fill up my micro-stepping. I want full micro-stepping on this driver here. It's going to make the movements a lot smoother, give me a lot more uh, resolution on the movements. It's also going to sound a lot nicer. It's going to sort of sing instead of go. It's, it'll sound like a chainsaw if you don't do this. <laughs> Sounds pretty bad. So what I'm doing here, I'll do this and I'll show you guys. So... It's got these jumpers right here, right? So to jumper these, you go across this way, okay? You don't go across this way, right? That won't jumper them. You go across up and down here. You go across vertically on these to jumper them together. And that tells it to do full micro-stepping. So I'll do it on X, Y, and A. I'm going to be doing this for a laser machine. So I'll not be using Z. I'll still put the jumpers on Z, I guess. Nothing better to do. They came with a lot of jumpers. Okay, so there's my X, Y. Okay. 
There's a Z. And then... There's the A. Okay. So now that all my micro jumper or my my uh, my micro step jumpers are set, now what I need to do is uh, set my mirroring. So what I want to do is I want to mirror my Y axis. So it goes X, Y, Z, and D12, right? I want to use the Y. So I got to put a jumper across the blue sets right here and the yellow sets right here. I don't jumper blue to yellow, right? I jumper the blue to the blue and the yellow to the yellow on the Y. So I'm gonna put a jumper here, put a jumper here. And now each motor will have its own driver, right? Okay, so I got my board set up now, okay? I got my X, Y, and A all set up right. Now I need to set up these uh, these motor drivers here. I'm gonna need three of them, so I'll open three of them. And these aren't like sensitive or anything. None of this stuff is like really that sensitive, like electronically. You don't need to ground out. You don't need to wear a wrist strap or anything. Okay. So we have a driver and we have a heat sink. Okay. So what you do here is even though the driver is a little bit to the right here, you don't put the heat sink on the right, you center it across the board. That's because the heat sink's aluminum and you don't want it touching the pins on the side. These pins poke up just a little bit here. I don't know if you see that, but they poke up just enough that they can touch the heat sink and we don't want that. So to prevent that, instead of centering the heat sink on the chip here, on this black chip, we center it on the board. And it still gets rid of plenty of heat that way. Okay, so I pulled the, the protective film off. Now, typically, my boards mount like this, right? They mount vertically. So if I want the best airflow I can get, I want this to mount vertically here. Okay. So I would mount it like this. So see how it's centered on the board there? And since the board's going up and down, this will go like this, and the air, heat will rise and come up. Okay? If my board was mounted like this, I'd mount this the other way. It's not really that big of a deal, but it can help a tiny bit. It might prevent problems. Okay, so I'm going to do that to my other three drivers here. I'm going to peel off the protective film. Okay, and then center on them, center them on the board here. Okay. Now the final step to do this. On the back side, it has labels on each of the pins here. One of them says enable. Right there, it says enable on the board here okay on here it says if you look really closely inside here it says en right in there okay see if i can get the light to show that there you go you can kind of see that it says en right there okay enable and en need to match up so i look under here okay that's enable right there so that pin here needs to go into the EN on the board. Okay, and once I got that lined up and I make sure I have my micro step uh, jumpers all selected, then I can install my, my drivers here. So that says enable right there, which is this pin up here, okay. Now, I have four drivers 
it's not good for the drivers to run without a load. You'll overheat them. So I'm not going to install the Z driver. One day, if I do add like an auto focusing or like add a rotary or something, I can use the Z axis. But today, right now, I'm just going to do X, Y, and A. Okay. So there's the enable. Oh, that's the enable right there. Okay. That says enable. This says enable. Okay. Or EN. There we go. Okay. Now my shield is ready to go. So I will show you a little bit more on the next video on how to actually upload a program to this. Thanks for watching.